All right, just like with the last class, I'm going to quickly build the uh, currency converter in Swift. You can see I've got it on the screen right now. I've already built it, so I'm going to go back and rebuild it, so to speak. But there it is. And you'll notice if I put a dollar amount in there and click convert, so if I change this amount, so I'll... Uh, let's see. What was that window? Scale 50%. There we go. So if I come in here and I put in nothing, and I click convert, it comes back. Again, you must have put a value. Saw that before. But when I do put a value in here, and again, it's as before, it's at 70. So if I put in 100 and convert, I even found the symbol for pounds. So I put that in there. All right. So let me stop the simulator, and I'm just going to build a brand new project and show you what I did. I've got the same exact jpeg right there that i showed you before i copied it over here all right you have to do it a little bit differently in here but it's no big stretch there it is so there's the jpeg all right so i'm just going to come in and get into swift get into xcode i should say well there's the code so i'm going to stop that that one uh Say, whoops, I don't want to duplicate it. No, no, no. Save. Close project. All right, so I'm starting all over again fresh. File, new, project. Keep it a single view app. I've already got one called currency converter. So again, I'll just call this currency, Swift, iPhone, no core data. No unit tests, no UI tests, etc. Save it to the desktop and tell it to create. All right. Bring up the main storyboard. And again, this is how I did it. It's not exactly the same way that you were shown in your specs, but just so you see it. All right. Uh, I don't need this right now, so that's good. Again, I'm going to click on here, and I'm going to change the size of this. Down will make it like a 4-inch. There. Okay. And as we did previously, I'm going to come in here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down into my object library and type in image view. There's an image view, so I'm going to grab it, drag it right up near the top. Stretch it all the way over. We'll do some auto layout on it in just a minute. All right, so there's the image view. Then under the image view, I'm going to, again, come in here and put a label. Drag that label in. Same kind of thing we just did. So I'm going to, again, stretch that way out here. And I'm going to uh, center align it, and I'm going to put in there, just like we did before, please enter a U.S. US dollar amount. All right, that's pretty good. That's fine. Then underneath that, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to put in a text field underneath there. fact, before I put in the text field, because that's going to hold the answer. So let me yeah, off, on, get rid of that. I'll put a button in first. And again, you can do just about anything you want to with these. I'm just stretching all of them out. Call that convert. All right. And then finally, again, we'll put in that text field. And I'll put that down here. That's not bad. It's certainly not perfect, but it's not bad. So I'm going to come up to the image view here. And I'm going to pin that to the top, to the left, and to the right. 
and add my three constraints. I'm going to do this all the way down. So I'm going to grab the next one, and again, top, left, right, the convert button, top, left, right, and then finally the text field. And again, top, left, right. I'm going to click over here. I'm going to click my last button and tell it to update all frames, which will get all that. Shouldn't have done that, but right, we'll just leave it right there. All right. So the next thing I want to do then, I've got the interface built. And there's really, when you think about it, there's two things I have to do before I add code. Okay. The first is I've got to add my image. And the second is, this is stagnant. This is not going to change. This is not going to change. All right, but I want to add an outlet for this. I'm sorry, an action for this and an outlet for that. Does that make sense? All right. So when you go and add information, you know, I, I would be in an image view or whatever, when you go and add stuff, when you add any images, they go in this assets.xc assets folder. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to try to re try to resize this. Of course, it's not going to let me. So oh, that's fine. I'll do it this way. Go into Finder and bring up my desktop. And there's that currency converter.jpg that you just saw. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to drag it basically right on top of that folder and then let go. Doesn't always like it the first time you do it, especially with this machine, but it'll eventually take it, so I'm not worried about it. There we go. Still didn't like it. Okie dokie. You should end up getting something that comes up here and it tells you this. See that? If you get this, it did it right. Because what it's saying is, do you want to literally move it there or do you want to copy it there? Apple always suggests, regardless, always say copy. Just in case there's a problem doing the copy so you've still got the original. So I'm going to have that copy items as needed. I'm going to click finish. And it's going to add the item to right here. Okay? So everything's set, finish. Okay? Nothing big right there. Okay, so that's that was one thing that I wanted to do, so I can close this now. All right, and I've got it. Whoops, sorry. Got to bring back my storyboard here. There we go. Now I can close that. Good. That's what I wanted. All right. So with this highlighted, I want to make sure that image view is highlighted right here. Then when I come over here into my attribute attributes inspector, you'll notice I've got a thing here that says image. It doesn't say source, it says image. That's what image do you want to put in here. Okay? So, when I click it, it'll be the only one there because there's nothing else in that folder. So there it is. And I put it in. That wasn't hard, right? You know, that was it. So now I can come in here and I can add, again, that's all I've got to add for this. I've got to add nothing extra for the, for the text. I want to add an IB outlet for the button, and I want to add an IB, I'm sorry, an IB action for the button and an IB outlet for the text field. Okay, so I'm going to do that next. I don't need this anymore, so I'm going to close that. Oops. Close that. There we go. Come on. Close. There you go. And I'm going to bring up my assistant editor. Okay? So... You know the drill by now. Open up a little space here. Come over here for my text field. Hold down on control. Hold down on the touchpad. Drag that up here. Okay. And I call that... Oh, I'm missing something here. Okay, hold on just one sec. Let me cancel. Right now, this is incomplete. Because where I have this, right here... I should have had another text field in here because that's where I wanted to actually add the value. 
So I'm going to grab this right here, and I'm going to move it up here. Does that make sense to everybody? Then I've got to put a label down here to hold my answer. All right, and I'll make it a text field. You'll understand why later. All right, but I'm going to do that. All right, so first thing I want to do is I want to click in here, and I want to remove all my constraints because this is going to wreak havoc. So I'm just going to clear all my constraints so there aren't any now. All right. So now I can go and I can move this down. And I can move this down. And you've seen this before, that if I want to, I'm going to just grab this, Command-C, Command-V. So I'm copying it. Okay, so I now have two of these. Does everybody understand what I just did? All right, again, image view, label, text field, button, text field. Okay, this is where I'm going to actually have to type in my value, so to speak. I mean, I'm doing it with a keyboard, but you get the idea. When I click convert, that's where the answer should go. It's down here. Okay, and I should have done that to begin with. I didn't. Sorry about that. All right, so I'm going to come back, and I want to add, at least try to add some constraints here. All right, now I want to come here and I want to grab this. This I just is going to be my dollar amount, and this I just call pound amount, even though it's got everything. So if I put 100 in here, it should say down here, 100 U.S. dollars equals 70 British pounds or something like that, all right, after I click that button. So I call these two things dollar amount, I believe, and pound amount. I believe it, that's what it was. Just try to keep it simple. So click here. Again, control, drag. This will be an outlet, and this will be dollar amount. Connect. Okay. Go from this one, control, drag. And that one will be pound amount. There's that one. And finally, I want to come in here and I want to drag from my button. And that's going to be an IB action. And again, I just call that, I believe, convert, I think. Yep. All right, make sure it's an action. Click connect. And that's where we'll put our code in just a second. All right. And all that's left is to add the code. Okay. So first thing I did at the top up here was I created some variables. And I had let conversion rate equal 0 0.70. Does everybody get the fact now that when you use let, it's a constant? Even though it's not an uppercase, so that's a constant. All right. So if I try to change that later, I'm going to get an error message. I've got a dollar value, and that I'm going to just set equal to 0, 0, 0. That's going to be the actual dollar value that we put in here that gets converted to a number, in here rather, right there. All right. So I'm also going to have another variable that I call pound value that, again, I set equal to 0, 0.0. All right, so again, dollar value that you see right here, that's the value we put in here converted to a number. Pound value is going to be that dollar value that we put in times this. Exact same way that we did it for, uh, for the Android app. Okay, no difference. And just like I did before, I create another couple variables. I call this var no input. 
and I said here equals you must enter a value and then finally var that I called some input just like you saw before and I set that equal to the empty string. Any questions on any of that stuff? Because all that's left is to add a little bit of code. All right. So down here in my convert function, let me drag or go down on this a little bit there. Let me hit enter a few times to move that there. Now I'm right at the top. So in my convert function, what I said in here was if dollar amount dot text equal equal double quote double quote meaning there's nothing in there then what I want to do is I want to set pound amount dot text come on, Jeff, equal to no input so in other words if I put nothing in here if I put nothing in here and I click this button it should come up and say you must enter a value that's what should appear here that's what I want to have happen. All right. So, else, meaning I've got a value in there. All right. So I'm saying dollar value equal double dollar amount dot text. And to make it syntactic syntactically correct you need those two exclamation points and then pound value is equal to dollar value times that conversion rate Con that thing times the conversion rate all right so then I'm going to build the string that I'm going to throw the answer into. So some input equals, and I want here the dollar value. Oops. And I just put here US dollar sign. All right. Equals. And then I want to add to that string. So some input plus equals. the pound amount British and I someplace in here like I said I found this online and just copied it in so where is that uh, I don't know where I put it it's not there I don't think it's here Nope, that's an old copy of the code. Well, someplace I had that pound symbol, but I don't know where it is right now. So I'm not going to use the pound symbol. I'll just say British P for pounds there. All right, and that's pound amount. And that's a little n. All right. And then finally, I want to say pound amount dot text equals some input. So I built that string. I built everything that I needed. All right. Now, there's two more things in here that I have to do. Okay. There's a little bit more code that I want to put in. Because I want to set it up so that when I click off, that my uh, the keyboard goes away. All right. So I want to come down. The first thing I want to do is up at the top here, where I say class view controller. Remember, I want to come in here and say UI text field delegate. All right. That's the first thing. I just added the comma there and then right here UI text field delegate all right so that's first thing I wanted to do then I've got to work my way down here and in my view did load 
I can get rid of that comment because I don't need it. But you may or may not remember, I want to say, because uh, I always get the line wrong, so I wrote it down in here someplace. There it is. Self dot dollar amount dot delegate equals self. That's doing the registering. All right. Then I want to come down here and also I want to come down and do my touches began. So override func touches began. And the code, remember, that I want to put into here should say self dot view dot end editing true. Okay. And then I also have to come in and say, and I'll you have to learn to spell. Come on. There we go. Then the, below that, I want to put func text field should return. And there, I just want to say return true. All right. I'm not sure why I'm getting there. I went away. Okay. And finally, the last thing that I have to do is to go back to my program here, to my interface. So I want to click on here, and you remember this. I'm going to click here, and I have to set my keyboard type up correctly. All right. So clicking on here to highlight this, right there. And then go over and find down here keyboard type. And I set it to decimal pad. That should be, should be everything. I don't think I missed anything. So I'm going to save it. And I'm going to try to run it. Hopefully you're noticing we're doing a lot of the same stuff in all these programs. The programs themselves that we've done so far have not been difficult. Well, again, you can see what happens. My simulator gets screwed up when it's set to 6, so I've got to quit the simulator, reset it back to 4, and then run the program again because I forgot to do that. All right, so it is set to 4. Now if I run it again, hopefully it'll be all right. Here's my build. There's my simulator. And hopefully, again, I'll put it right next to the other one. It should look the same. Ideally, at least, it will work. And I just literally just Google British pound symbol, and it's in there. You, um, for the British pound symbol, symbol, you can also go up to the edit menu. Ah, and put it in there. The way we, characters. There you go. Everybody hear that? We'll look at that in a second. As soon as this comes up.
Thank you, John. Yeah, we did that last year when we built that calculator, remember that? And I checked the business, didn't I? No, I should have thought of that. I knew there had to have been a easier way to do it than that. There it is. So there's the program. You see, it looks pretty much the same way it did before. So again, if I click Convert, you must enter a value. You've seen that before. Again, I could have centered that, I guess. But if I click over here, sooner or later I'll find the right place. And my there it is. So I just put in some number. I don't know what it was. I'm clicking off of it now. So that's a pretty big number. But convert. Okay, well, that screwed up. And I know exactly what that is. I, I uh, printed off the wrong value. So let's go fix both these. So let's stop the simulator. All right, let's go back to here. I want to show you what John mentioned before because he's very much correct. Okay, right now I took I took the mouse and I put it over the P in pounds because what I want there, here I've got U.S. dollar sign, here I want British and I want the pound symbol. All right, that's what I want to have there. All right, and what was it again? Uh, go to edit. Okay, so edit. Emoji and symbols at the bottom. And somewhere in here, it should come up with a classification. There should be something monetary or something in there. Because I, I, I actually could put in one of these. That would be good, right? Search for pound up there in the upper right. There it is. All right, I want to use that one. And there it put it in. So if we did that too fast, or if I did that too fast, again, you go to Edit, down to Emoji and Symbols, which is at the bottom. You can search for what you're looking for, or you can go into the different categories here. That might have very well but under Symbols. I don't know. It might have been under something else. All right, but it's much easier to do a search up here. Then just grab what you want, double-click on it, and it put it in like it did right here. The first time that box comes up, too, you might have to click way over here? Right there, yeah. Because uh, that'll give you an expanded view. All right, that'll, okay, so what he said was the first time you do this, you may have to click right here on this icon to give you an expanded view. All right, so let's close that. Now, the only thing that's wrong is when I printed this out, this says dollar value, and this should not have said pound amount. Uh, which one was wrong? This one should have said pound value, not pound amount. My error. That's what it should have said. So let me do it one more time. File, save. Let's run it again. It's set to iPhone 4S. Hopefully it won't take very long because we're done. You know, the rest of the period is lab. All right. Thank you for those words of wisdom. All right, should be coming up literally within seconds. What's this current white? Okay, again, convert with nothing in it. You must enter a value. Otherwise, so if I come in here and put in 100, click off. There's the 100. Convert. 100 U.S. dollars equals 70 British pounds. Okay? So it's virtually the same program in the two languages. Again, 
The stuff that's different is basically the syntactic stuff. If I wanted to, and I'm not even going to run it again, but just to show you, I could have really come back and taken that thing, that what this uh, first text field, and I could have said center. I could have taken the second text field and also said center. May have looked a little nicer. I don't know. Sometimes when you work with that stuff, it's totally up to you as far as whether you think it looks better or you think it looks worse, all right? As far as I'm concerned, when you start getting to where you're talking aesthetics, I don't really care. I more care that, did you build it? Did it work? Does it run correctly? Does it not blow up? All right, that's, for lack of better words, that's what I'm looking for. All right, so you'll see it one more time, then that literally will be it. <clears throat> I do hope that anyone who's behind will do what they can next week to try to catch up. All right? Yeah, you won't have a lot of time in here, but that you'll try because I don't want you to have to spend your break working on this stuff. So now notice... It's centered. You must enter a value. Or when I come into here and I put in 100, click off, click convert. All right. You can make your own case, but it looks a little bit more symmetrical like that. Maybe that looks a little bit nicer to you. All right. That's all that I had. Again, really, re really realize here that when we click over here, and I guess I don't have to worry. There is no negative sign. So I'm protected with that, too. Okay, I don't know, I don't believe it would let me, like, for example, if I removed what was there and I put in 100.08.7, I don't think it'll let me do that. It did. Well, that's interesting. Does it convert? Uh, I'm sure it's going to blow up. All right, so how would you fix that? There's different ways that you could fix it. One way would be literally to only allow whole numbers. That would be the easiest way, right? The other way is you'd have to go in, if you're going to do that, and check. And basically, if you found more than one decimal place, you'd have to take and use like a string function to grab everything from that over and remove it. All right, I never even thought of that until right now when I read it. All right, that's all that I've got then.